All praise be to Allah, Lord of Lords. All praise be to Allah, King of Kings. All praise be to Allah, who compels whom he wills. Glory be to him, Subhanah, the subduer of the mighty. And glory be to him, who repels the plots of the wicked. What we witness around the world today, dear respected brothers and sisters, of injustices and oppression, tyrannical regimes terrorizing entire populations and innocent civilians, violating their properties, their land, their places of worship, and aggressing against them and their lives. An almost endless and countless list of crimes perpetrated by regimes who seem to believe that they are invincible. Empires who forget that history is not a series of one-off events, but rather there is a pattern and a repeating cycle of good versus evil, good prevailing over evil sooner or later. These regimes face a litany of charges which they will be held accountable for by their fellow man in this life and will be held accountable for these crimes by the king of kings and the judge of judges on the day of judgment. We've heard many preachers and scholars and activists, people with humanity and the conscience, denounce the many crimes and unspeakable acts of brutality committed against the innocent, whoever they may be and wherever they may be around the world. The pictures of men, women and children under the rubble of their bombed homes or displaced from their rightful lands or of those turned away by their neighboring countries left to drown in the sea or violently detained or in mass incarceration or forced into sterilization, or whose children are taken away from them by force to be raised by a people who will delete their identity and replace it with another one. These accounts, sometimes captured on video for the world to see, are disturbing, no doubt, saddening and angering too. They can give rise to pessimism and despair and hopelessness until when will we continue to see evil prevail some people ask now the conflict between good and evil is not a new one brothers and sisters it is one that is as old as time itself and when we speak about good and evil we speak about good and evil relative to one another because as we know in this world there is no absolute good, nor is there any absolute evil. And this is something we have explained many a time, noting that good and evil are but tests, and they are not innately rewards or punishments, respectively. Allah Ta'ala, He said, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna," And we test you with evil and with good, as trials. Now like any test, there are only two outcomes, success or failure. You either pass an exam or you fail the exam. And with there being a chance of success when you're tested with evil, this concludes that evil is not an absolute, evil is not absolute, as there can come good from it. And also, with there being a chance of failure when tested by good, this concludes that good is not absolute in this life, as evil can come from it. The only absolute good is that enjoyed by the believers in the gardens of their Lord, after which there is no account. And the only absolute evil is that experienced by the wicked who will never receive any relief from the punishment they uh, are tormented by. In this life, dear brothers and sisters, 
there is a constant struggle between good and evil. Sometimes good overpowers evil to the extent that people think that no evil can ever come after this great good that they're experiencing. This is the good that people are tested by. How so? That good can result in a, se result in a sense of security, a feeling of invincibility. What can ever harm us after this good? People will exclaim. A sense of complacency develops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he disciplined the companions on the day of Hunayn when they were impressed by their great numbers. As he said, subhanah, And even on the day of Hunayn, when your great number pleased you, they said, today we will not be defeated due to our number. They were pleased by how many, how many people, how many soldiers they had on their side. And on the day of Hunayn, when your great number pleased you, but it did not avail you at all. It didn't benefit you at all. And the earth was confined, or and the earth was confining for you, despite its vastness, then you turned back, fleeing. Safety and security are something that are good for nations and individuals, of course. But they are tests also. When no opponent poses a threat to a people, a sense of security can form that may even extend towards Allah. Feeling that one is safe from Allah and his plots and his plans. How many nations rose to power and to might only to say, we don't need God anymore. We don't need God. We don't need uh, religion anymore. They forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls the wind. They forget that Allah Ta'ala is in control of plagues of locust which can decimate entire agricultural industries. They forget that Allah can control the rain and withhold it from them. Allah Ta'ala tells us of those who feel secure from his plan. Why? Because they, they, enjoyed, they enjoyed prosperity. Allah said, أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ then did the people of the cities feel secure from our punishment coming to them at night while they sleep? Or did the people of the cities feel secure from our punishment coming to them in the morning while they play? Then did they feel secure from the plan of Allah? But no one feels secure from the plan of Allah except the losing people. Financial prosperity, brothers and sisters, is also a good. It is something good which is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You secure it with gratitude and you lose it with ungratefulness. The people of Seba, Sheba, enjoyed great prosperity due to the agriculture but they turned away from Allah but they turned away from Allah despite what he had given them so we sent upon them the flood of the dam and we replaced their two fields of gardens with gardens of bitter fruit, uh, tamarisks, and something of sparse loat trees. By that we repaid them because they disbelieved. And do we thus repay except the ungrateful? And do we repay the ungrateful except in such a way? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repays the ungrateful in such a way. And sometimes evil overpowers good to the extent that people think that no good can ever come after this evil. Of course, that's not true. Because there will always be good that will prevail after the evil. So evil, again, is a test. 
Will you believe in the victory promised by Allah or the lies told by the shaitan? Musa alayhi salam was promised victory by his Lord with the condition that his people believe in Allah and obey him. And so when Musa and his, uh, when Fir'aun rather, Pharaoh and his army advanced towards Musa and Bani Israel and closed in on them and Musa and Bani Israel had nowhere to flee. The sea was in front of them and the army was behind them. They said, Inna la mudarakun. They lost hope. They lost hope. They saw the evil before them. Allah tested them and they lost hope. Inna la mudarakun. We will be overcome. But Musa alayhi salam was certain in the victory from his Lord and he said, Kalla. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. No. Indeed with me is my Lord. He will guide me. So those who are grateful, uh, those who are grateful during times of ease must also be tested with difficulty. They must be tested with evil to see how they react in times of hardship. Will they remain optimistic and hopeful of the promise of Allah or will they reject it? For rejecting the promise of Allah and Allah's mercy is the way of the losers and the way of those who go astray. وَمَنْ يَقْنَطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّهِ إِلَّا الضَّالُّونَ And who despairs of the mercy of his Lord except those astray? What we see then, brothers and sisters, is that good and evil are not the outcomes. They are tools. They are means and tools used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to direct the people to the straight path. A path lined with trials, good and evil. The target is to reach Allah. And this is why in the end, the conflict between good and evil, which we see playing out every day, we have seen played out throughout human history and it will be played out until the day of judgment, is actually in the interest of mankind. The two must exist as barriers, barriers, on either side of a lane to keep the traveler with in the middle of that lane to reach his destination the destination is not the good or the evil the destination is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure good and evil are not the results they are means they can both be means to gratitude or uh, patience respectively and gratitude and patience are something equally rewarding. Or they can be a result, they can result in complacency, which we spoke about. Or despair. Good can, be, can result in complacency and evil can result in despair and complacency, which is secure, being, feeling secure from the plot of Allah and the plan of Allah. Complacency and despair are both equally sinful. And we have been warned of both. And so man will continue to be tested with both good and evil until the day of judgment. Man will not enter paradise until he is tested like those who came before us. Allah Ta'ala, he said, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدُخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Or do you think that you will enter paradise while such trial has not yet come to you as it has come to those who passed before you? They were touched by poverty and hardship and were shaken until even their messenger and those who believed with him said, When is the help of Allah? Unquestionably, the help of Allah is near. The messengers, and the, uh, 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 the messengers and their followers did not despair from the victory and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why did Allah ta'ala test them so severely? For one main reason, brothers and sisters. One main reason. The overwhelming reason, brothers and sisters, is so that he makes them turn to him alone and turn away from all but him. They had to give up any expectations of anyone coming to their aid except Allah. They had to lose confidence 
in all of the means and place their confidence and hope in Allah and only Allah. Allah Ta'ala, he said, حَتَّى إِذَا اسْتَيْأَسَ الرُّسُلُ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ كُذِبُوا جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُنَا فَنُجِّيَ مَنْ نَشَاءُ وَلَا يُرَدُّ بَأْسُنَا عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ They continued until, meaning the, 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 the messengers continued to convey their message, until when the messengers despaired, and we'll explain this word, and حَتَّى إِذَا اسْتَيْأَسَ الرُّسُلُ Until they despaired. Despaired of whom? Until when the messengers despaired and were certain that they had been denied, there came to them our victory, and whoever we willed was saved. They despaired, brothers and sisters, not in Allah. That is not the despair of the prophets. The prophets never despair in Allah. They despaired in all of the means and placed their hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. When Allah looked into their hearts, He found faith in Him only. And so he intervened and granted them his victory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us of the account of what happened in the build-up and during the battle of the confederates. When the confederates, the allied troops, Quraysh and its allies, gathered 10,000, an army of 10,000 to surround and Play siege on Medina to eliminate the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entirely. An army the size of which the Arabian Peninsula had never seen before. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam promised his companions victory in Yemen and in Persia and Byzantium. The, the hypocrites exclaimed, one of us is too afraid to go and answer the call of nature in the outskirts of Medina, out of fear that the advancing army will attack him and we're being promised victory over these strong and great empires of our time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us of what happened to the believers during that testing period. He says, subhanahu, إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبَصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Remember when they came at you from above you and from below you, you were surrounded. No help, no allies, no support coming to you, you were surrounded. And when your eyes shifted in fear, looking left and right, your eyes darting around, What's going to happen? What shall we do? And the hearts reached the throats and you assumed about, about Allah various assumptions. What is going to happen? What, is, what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with us? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to fulfill for us His promise? There the believers were tested. There, in, during, that, uh, 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 during that time, the believers were tested. And shaken with a severe shaking. Everyone was shaken, brothers and sisters. All of them were shaken. Their faith was shaken. Will Allah keep his promise? And their ranks were shaken. And this is one of the greatest benefits of evil which it, when, it, when it afflicts us. That the ranks of the believers are shaken. So that we may distinguish the believers from the hypocrites. Now, I'll give you an example. In the past and even until today, primitive prospecting involves, involves uh, violently sieving through large heaps of earth and rock, yes? To filter them out and come out with what? With some gold. And even that gold must undergo an, an even more extreme purification process, which is smelting, where it is heated to such high temperatures to melt it and separate the impurities from it. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us. We have to be tested with difficulty. Why? So that we are shaken and then the impurities come out from below. We are shaken. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who knows what is in the hearts, while we do not know who is our supporter, from who is conspiring against us behind the scenes. 
And we do not know who harbors resentment and hatred and hypocrisy in their hearts and who harbors sincerity and love for Allah. Allah knows that and reveals it to us through the tests. As he said, لِيَمِيزَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ So that Allah may distinguish the wicked from the good. Those who do not retreat and turn away from the truth, we get to know who they are. Those who don't compromise, compromise their values, we get to know who they are. Those who are not seduced by money or fame or titles, we get to know who they are. Those who are not afraid of the threats, we get to know who they are. There is much good that comes from evil, brothers and sisters. So do not despair, nor be complacent and secure from the plans of Allah when you experience good, for they are both tests. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us clarity of vision so that we may see things as they are. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us gratitude and make us of the patient and those with resolve and forbearance. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. إن الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وبعد. Brothers and sisters, uh, to conclude very quickly, there are سنن كونية, universal laws and principles which govern our world and govern and govern human beings and their relationships with one another. One such universal principle is that when the trial becomes most severe, the end is near. No tyranny lasts. No oppression continues forever. Pharaoh and his empire fell. And they didn't fall when they were at their weakest. They fell when they were at their strongest. Remember that. And brothers and sisters, while tyranny will never last, it may overcome. It may overcome and evil may overcome the good temporarily. But it is soon vanquished. Allah Ta'ala, He decides when. So do not ask others, when is, there gonna, when is evil going to be eliminated? When is tyranny going to end? When is oppression going to end? Allah decides when. Not us. What Allah asks of us is not to devise a time frame of when evil will be defeated. Rather, He commands us to be faithful and firm. Firm in our stance and firm upon the truth. For we are not accountable for the results we are accountable for our action that we are able to perform according to our circumstances and our means. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicate tyranny and eradicate oppression and grant victory to all those who are oppressed around the globe, whoever they may be, whatever color they their, whatever color they are, whatever language they speak, whatever religion they adhere to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer the calls of the oppressed, for between their call and him there is no veil. And he says, by my might and my glory, I shall answer you, if not now, then after some time. هذا وصل وسلم على خير الأنام فإن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه ثم بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال جل من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعلي بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة